Damn it, I died again. Oh shoot, my code's failing also. Let me check. Oh, I'm using the wrong function. Let me change that. Let me save the file. Let me restart the application. This is actually kind of sweet. I don't know why I don't do all my coding in here. I am one with the code. This actually all sucked. Well, mostly. And I'll, I'll get to why it doesn't fully suck in the end. I'm Kevin, I do computers, and I'm gonna be talking about programming in VR today. And I was inspired by this Reddit comment that basically once the resolution of VR gets better, it'll be the de facto way to code. They gave the caveat that this is a ways off, but they said five years. That's not very far away. Also, this comment's from like a year ago. So four years from now, is VR the way we are going to code? You see this all over VR, internet, watering holes, forums, subreddits, that VR is this untapped magical resource that we're just waiting for the little bits of technical specs to get better and then everything's gonna be converted overnight to VR. They think that VR is somehow intrinsically better than the current experience that's just held back by the current technology. And I think there's something else to this. I think VR is cool, don't get me wrong, but I think VR is a different experience that has inherent drawbacks that aren't just solved by specs. And let's ignore all that. Let's, let's talk about programming. Let's talk about specifically, can you write code in a VR headset? Yes. You can. It's pretty straightforward actually open a VR big screen app, which there's a lot of, I will give you, and they're not always pretty simple to find which ones do what. I mean, just reading the reviews, they all tend to have, let's call it a theme. I personally tried a few different ones and I'm on the Oculus Rift S, so I just use the native Oculus app. It worked, no extra tools or plugins. And also on a personal note, for slower paced VR games, I was actually using this to pin videos right outside of my field of view. They actually overlay while you're still playing the game. So for example, I could watch a YouTube video as I'm getting wrecked by preteens in poker. And I, and I tried VR programming for a bit, actually working on a future project that's gonna be showing up on this channel. I'll just ask you, subscribe if you wanna know what Sir Bark's Lot is. And it didn't take long of trying to code in this environment that a few things became very clear. First, our Reddit friend from earlier, was pretty right about one thing. The resolution utterly sucks. And I know I'm using the Rift S, which is middle of the road, but I've also played some other games and like the Valve Index and reading text is definitely not a strong suit for any VR headset. But although reading text is bad in VR, it's not even the worst issue. The worst issue is moving your head around because the field of view is so bad. You can have as many screens as you want in some of these applications, but it doesn't matter if you only can see one single app at a given time. You don't realize what you take for granted being able to casually move your eyes around the different monitors in front of you if you have multiple. Now, in fairness, in fairness to the VR people, these are things that are getting better with each iteration and maybe, who knows, in the next five years, these are all perfect, right? We have 8K, 16K in each eye, and field of view is wider than our own personal field of view. There's still some other issues. Let's talk about ergonomics. And I don't just mean that it's hot and it's straining on the eyes and it makes people sick and it might fog up. All of those are true, but who knows? They might get better like the other issues. I mean, what's it like being productive with a bulbous hunk of plastic on your face? Let's talk text input. In the beginning of this video, I was using touch controllers to change my code in that intro video. And this, this utterly, utterly sucks. I mean, I don't think I need to explain why. The best analogy I have is putting in like a Wi-Fi password using the arrows on a TV remote. If you've ever had to do that, it's, it's not fun. It works for a few characters, but anything beyond that, you need something more robust. And I hear what you might be saying. You might be saying, that's an easy one. Don't you have a keyboard in front of you? Don't you know how to touch type? And to that I answer, I thought I did. Now, when you put the VR headset on, I got the home row down, right? I can type words, I can do some basic logic, but it's all those keys that you hit while programming you don't realize that you don't normally hit when you're touch typing. And I found myself looking through the little nose hole in the VR headset. Like I hit F5, shift F5 multiple times a day. Never got that right first try. And for those of you that are laughing at me, like try those weird key combinations that you hit all the time. For me, like when I'm working on a Mac, that's control shift four, hitting shift F5, 
um, using insert in any of the whatever characters are above the arrow key. See, I just had to look down right now as I was talking about that. I, I, I can't not look at my keyboard when I'm talking about my keyboard. Besides just the basic letters, everything else is a little bit more complicated than that. This really isn't a full negative because with time, I'm sure I'll just pick it up, but I just wanted to call this out because it's not as simple as you would think. Now, the next part of ergonomics is specifically getting work done in this setting. Now, this is where I think movies kind of do a disservice. Think of like the hacker that sits down in a closet for eight hours and just pecks away at their code, staring at one program. And we all have jobs. Like we all sit at a desk and know what reality is there. Reality is there is constant distraction throughout the day. You're never just working on one thing during a whole session of insert productivity. I personally was constantly getting distracted and having to take the headset off. If it was for my phone, if it was for my partner asking me a question, if it was for my dog, if it was to get some water or use the restroom. These are all super trivial things when you're not taking the headset on and off. Like during your normal life, like you look at your phone, you go back to work, look at your phone, take a sip of water. Like doing that in VR, you have to fully take the headset off. and. Like then once you put it back on, you have to refocus and get all set again. This, this is annoying. It's really annoying. And this is another thing that might get better with technology. It might get better that I'm getting more used to it, but it's just not as simple as like clock in, put the headset on, clock out. Like there's this magic reality people feel it is. And on the point of taking the headset on and off, the whole other side of this is human interaction. Now, I purposefully titled this programming in VR, not just coding in VR, because like writing code in VR, like I said, you can do it. But programming requires this different level of interaction. You have meetings, you have paired programming, you were interviewing other engineers and so on. And this is just another concept that just utterly breaks down in VR. People wanna see each other face to face, or at least simulated face to face, <laughs> COVID. And the elephant in the room here is those VR evangelists are gonna say, VR is the future of social interaction. Don't you see what they do with VR over here? And maybe? I don't know. All I can tell you is definitely not the way people interact with each other today. And most of the people I work with or hang out with don't want to be using VR to replace the traditional meeting ways that we have now. So let's take a step back. Just writing code in VR, it's not really great. I don't think specs are gonna change that. Some people might actually enjoy it. And I've found a few people online that seem to do just that. But same for any other basic productivity in VR, like, Many of the advantages come with drawbacks that aren't necessarily solved by just upping the VR specs. Okay, there's all the suck. At the beginning of this video, I said there's hope. Jokingly, but I did, I did say there's hope. Hope doesn't come from just coding in VR. Hope comes from redefining different elements of programming. You see this in VR gaming also. Many of the best experiences didn't come from a one-to-one -one conversion from a normal game to a VR game. They come from the creation of a new format or redefining the rules completely or augmenting what you think that original experience was. And the same is looking to be true for productivity and in our case, programming. The question should not be how does VR replace programming in a desk and monitors, but how does programming be enhanced by VR? Now in my process of exploring this world of programming VR, I did find a few different people that were doing this in an interesting way that wasn't just, you know, throwing code up in a VR headset. Just like most things in VR, this is super early days. But here's a few examples of some interesting things I found. The first is this pretty cool 3D user interface people are building where they're coding in real time and experiencing it in the space around them in VR. So changing your code is reflecting the reality in which you're living in VR. The experience here isn't the writing of the code, but the experience the code has on your surroundings. Now you see this also with this tool that I found that is completely replacing coding with these logic blocks where you're no longer typing code into a screen that happens to be VR, but you're manipulating objects in the 3D space around you that happens to build an application or build some logic that you wanna use. Another way this works is a tool I found called Primitive. This is a code visualization tool that allows you to see all the connections and dependencies of a given project in this node style 3D graph. This one was the coolest to me because although the app has some clunk, it's presenting what could be. I didn't really find much value in it today, but I think there's something here in the long run. Imagine hopping in here with a colleague and working through some complicated dependencies. 
Overall, these are still pretty far away. I don't see them augmenting my day-to-day -day activities or workflows as an engineer, but it's still pretty fun to see what is the future, and I personally find it curious to see what could be. So yeah, that's my attempt to figure out if I can program in VR. I don't really see myself using it anytime soon, even these tools that I talked about in the end. But I don't know, tell me what you think. Have any of you coded in VR? Have you done any other productivity in VR? Uh, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you want to see more junk like this. Um, yeah, have a good day.